Campbell Morgan Seaman. Welcome. Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm I'm well. I'm enjoying the kind of nicer, slightly breezier weather that's going on. I got out for a walk. That was nice. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, welcome everyone to Monday Meets. This is the Willow's ongoing series of conversations with staff about the programs at the Willow, um, about the um, folks we serve and uh, about just sort of what's going on in the Willow world um, as we try to navigate um, the pandemic and keep services available and make sure that we're doing everything in our power to be able to break the cycle of violence at every point along it. So we have with us today as part of that one of our prevention Based specialists. A lot of what you do, Morgan, is kind of in the, the areas of prevention and education. So uh, very excited to talk to Morgan Seaman. Uh, our our is foster transition support, right? That's am I getting that right? I mean, I think the official title is foster transition advocate, but it's yeah, foster transition is. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, this is a live um, broadcast on Facebook. We would love to hear your questions. You can feel free to ask them. Um, I've got my phone right here and I'm checking regularly to see right. if anyone has any, any questions. So we might have those for you as we go through, but we've kind of talked over yeah. the things that we're going to chat about today. Um, and first and foremost, you know, I kind of blew the first question, which is always tell me your name, but um, <laughs> tell us about yourself, Morgan. Uh, what's your back, background? Um, how did you get involved in this and, and how long have you been with the Willow? Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Morgan Seaman. Um, I have been with the Willow um, uh, since January of this year. So about eight, about nine months, you know, and um, I, I came from, oh, from, from the education side. I previously was working with uh, Wichita State University, uh, their Gear Up program, which was a Department of Ed, you know, funded college access program for for students specifically um, in in foster care, and so um, did that for for three years. I was like the regional coordinator uh, in Topeka for a year and a half, and then before that was a uh, college access advisor. So I, I kind of worked my way up, um, and that's it's kind of been the theme, like where I've been working at. You know, so then prior to Gear Up, I was at O'Connell Youth Ranch, just here in Lawrence. Right, you know, just kind of right off of K-10. Um, and I, I began working there in September 2003. So like, and uh, up until 2016. So, I mean, I worked there for about 13 years and just really like that was where, you know, I was boots on the ground, so to speak, or, you know, work, I was a direct care staff, you know, working for about seven years of that. And then the other was working uh, in case management. So, I mean, I have, experience working in in that low level uh at, like at the time it was a yrc2 so like a youth residential center level two so like and at the time we were serving jja kids you know so kids who were in kdoc custody um which you know the status really you know like whether you're kdoc status you know jja or your sink you know child in need of care they're the same, same kids, right? That I met. I mean, they come from trauma backgrounds, or I mean, just really have these these adverse experiences. Right? I mean, like early on, right? That that normal folks don't have, and so they start off with an extra layer of barriers, and so um, just you know, working and sorry, <laughs> working kind of like you know directly with those kids, um, I, I mean, really just like opened my eyes to like what, what their needs were. And like, I, I got a sense of how, where I fit into that, you know, I, I more, more so, you know, these were teenage boys, you know, 12 to probably 18. Um, and so, you know, that's a whole other, <laughs> you know, kind of, uh, population in itself but then right. you, know, you know then you heap on you know lots of like peer peer relation you know behavioral issues but i mean all of that is uh you know is is just a, what we see 
you know, the tip of the, of, of that iceberg. And below all that is, you know, the emotional and psychological state of that, of that kid. Um, well, can we talk a little bit about that? That kind of segues into my next question is, can we talk a little bit about the, the foster transition program is not that old. It's one of our newer programs. I think it was, right did last year um, that it started under um, Emily Schwertfeger. Uh, and she um, had uh, she had the position up until you took over right in January. Um, and so can you tell me kind of a little bit about, I mean, it's a relatively new program. What does it look like? How do people, uh, you know, how, 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 do, how does the Willow get involved in this process of foster transition? And what is foster transition? <laughs> It's, um, I mean, to me, you know, like, I work with 11-year-olds to 19-year-olds, right? I mean, so, like, I have a spectrum of students, right? And, like, and in, 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 in any given group, I'll have a 12-year-old and maybe a 16 or 17-year-old, right? And so, um, what the services look like are different, you know, are vastly different. So, I have to adapt, you know, and just... Um, my groups, you know, just to kind of be broad, you know, like preventative, like what is a, you know, what are boundaries or like how, how to recognize, you know, um, abusive relationships and things like that. Um, you know, that's the, the psychoeducation, but then kind of on the, as, as kids get older, you know, um, kind of like references to gear up, I mean, like educational support services, like gear up. You know, I mean, I, I will rep gear up, you know, all, all day because those kids need to know about it. Um, and, you know, just kind of talking with their, you know, like if they have a case plan, kind of, you know, I talking to the, uh, the folks who, you know, who manage those, um, whether that's at the facility or, or, you know, their KDC workers or DCF or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, it, the, you know the services look look different. I mean, depending on you know the kid that you're working with. Um, I mean, I guess a service I would like really like the. I don't know. I I guess like looking forward, you know, um, and and like cultivating relationships. I know with like tenants to homeowners or um, like having actual independent living spaces. You know, um, like houses, you know, like those tiny house, like those tiny homes, um, oh. right? If like DCF could contract out like three or four of those and have like a house manager, um, you know, so those kids can actually um, have stability, you know, because they come out of placement, you know, having relative stability, like, you know, while they're in that placement, but then it's, um, it's really tough to kind of pick up, pick that back up. And it's, you know, starts with like the base relationship that you have with caregivers or, you know, adults kind of in your strata, like, you know, surrounding you, um, which a lot of the students I work with, you know, lack that social skill of creating meaningful relationships and then being able to like access them and reach out, you know, when they need, when they need the help. Mm. Um, so that's a, that's, that's that's barrier. <laughs> Fascinating because I think I think uh, a lot of times we look to the sort of the end result and be like, well, we want them to be able to get a job, so we want them to have job skills, or we want them to be able to get a further education, so we want to give them ed education skills, or we want them to have transportation, so we need to we need to you know find a way to get them a car, and, and you don't really. Um, take into account that at the core of all of those is this idea of creating a network and navigating systems and having that uh, that wherewithal and, and information that you need to navigate those systems so that no matter what your challenge, you have a set of skills that, that you then can apply to, you know, finding that job or getting that education or getting that transportation. Right, right. And, and, and it's been my experience with, with the students I've worked with, you know, who, who've grown up in the system is they don't really want anything to do with it i mean you know because they've been traumatized by it yeah honestly you know um just like you know the the constant kind of um oh like the transient nature of of that population you know they've spent like two weeks in a placement or maybe a 
you know, maybe they're just doing one night placements, right? I mean, so the, the, the stability, you know, uh, it varies, you know, from kid to kid and from placement to placement. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, at, at the base of that is, you know, trying to build these relate these inter and intra relational skills um, within the system that is kind of traumatizing and re-traumatizing. So it, it's um, it's it's a difficult thing. I mean, I've I've accepted that, you know, like the right. first few years, you know, that I was working, um, you know, uh, with these kids, it was like, man, it, it was it was it was unbelievable, right? You like like you're met you you hear these stories, right? And you're like, no, that that no. You're be you know, like that cannot be true. Um but it, but it you know, these these are experiences, you know, these these kids have had. And so just learning to yeah, sit sit and listen. Yeah. I'm just going to take a moment to let everybody know we are on Facebook Live right now, unless you're watching this on YouTube on the video. Um, if you're watching it live, feel free to send us a question in the form of a comment on Facebook. I've got my phone here, and I'm happy to kind of put any questions to Morgan that you may have. Um, if you think of a question later or you're watching the rebroadcast, uh, do feel free. I'll put our emails um, on the descriptions down beneath so you can feel free to email either one of us. Um, with Morgan Seaman from uh, Foster Support, sorry, Foster Transition Advocate, um, I wanted to talk to you. So this kind of ties into what you were previously talking about, but one of the programs that we're running right now on social media is hashtag we are here, um, which, which we're also you know, using we're here um, as a social media program talking about the recent spate of uh, memes and posts on Facebook and, and other social networks, um, which are addressing child trafficking and using some very kind of graphic and visual imagery of kind of kiddos in, in tied up or in basements or alone in rooms. And it's, you know, kind of bringing attention to the issue of trafficking, but at the same time, it's, it's giving a very specific um, view that's not always the case of what trafficking is. And so we're to kind of broaden that by giving a little more education on trafficking and uh, on both child trafficking and trafficking in general um, through these social media posts. And one of the reasons I was glad that we're talking to you now is because I think there is an intersection between trafficking and, and kind of foster care. You know, when kids come off foster care, they're often in a, in a very delicate and vulnerable position. Um, can you kind of go into that a little bit and talk about sort of the intersection between foster care and trafficking? Right, yeah, I would, I would say that in that, you know, that vulnerable period of when students are, you know, leaving the system or they're, you know, um, kind of transitioning from one, one environment or, you know, community to another, and, and, and they don't have a lot of support, you know, they don't, I mean, like, they don't have, like, really fr a friend network or an, a, a kind of a positive adult network you know to to reach out i'm i'm just thinking like kids are like you know go to like a big college you know who are from like a small a smaller town who you know who are in the system and then you know they just want to go to ku right i mean like they don't really have this idea um of what what really you know like moving to lawrence and you know taking on a full load is right and so i mean i think it begins with just like giving kids facts and um, building up their interpersonal skills of, I mean, and teaching them autonomy. I mean, like, and like what autonomy looks like and setting boundaries. I mean, because, you know, setting boundaries for yourself, um, that's, that's the basis for kind of all the relationships you have, you know, going forward. Right. And I mean, so, I mean, my ideal, you know, like ideally, I would love to just get all of that psychoeducation to them as as early as possible. You know, like seventh grade, right? Um, sixth grade. You know, I mean, like right when they're starting to build their their craft, their peer relations, and I mean, you know, their peer groups and forming their identities. Because I mean, really, that you know, that identity is fluid, but but your core values kind of are set. Um, and, and if you can learn to advocate for yourself and 
you know, really listen to your inner voice um, and, and, you know, open up and be vulnerable and trust, trust adults, you know, I mean, like trust the, the right kind of adults, um, you know, then going forward, you know, you would, it's, it mitigates all of that, you know, of getting into an abusive relationship, right, or a, a dependent relationship on somebody. Um, and then you being wholly at the whim of that person, right? Um, and and so I, it it just comes down to you know relationships. I would say in like teaching kids really to advocate for themselves and to know um, who to turn to if they are in an abusive relationship and kind of help you know. Yeah. To rebuild from there. I know that that you that uh, everything is kind of changed in the post pandemic world, but um, I am. Can we talk a little bit about what your your day kind of looked like before things got you know went into quarantine? What what it looks like now, and the uh, the changes you've had to make in order to accommodate um, you know sort of public safety? Because a lot of a lot of your meetings are in. Uh, are are with youth in in some of the homes like uh, O'Connell, and you've got obviously got guidelines there. Um, yeah. so talk us through what it, what it did look like and what it does look like in your world. Right. Yeah. So I mean, probably around M March, you know, was when we kind of halted groups for uh, two or three months, right? Um, when basically I was at home working on curriculum you know, and like adapting. Kind of the adult curriculum um, to uh, you know to to youth essentially. Um, yeah, I I was going into Franklin County, you know, their their JDC and uh, serving kids there up until uh, March, um, and then you know that has fallen off, you know, because that I mean that's a confined space. I mean I I tried to do groups outside, you know, I mean like they had a basketball court, so I was like, man, let's you know, let's, let's incorporate, you know, that into group. Um, right. Then I ended up like playing basketball with a mask on and, you know, 98 degree weather and like seriously almost passed out. So, um, <laughs> it, it was, uh, I mean, but you know, it, it's, it's built on the connection, you know, with the, with those kids. Right. So, I mean, like, you know, like it probably would have been really cool if I would have passed out, you know, like, oh, you know, but just like, so it, and then I go out to the villages, um, just south of town. Um, I serve two homes out there, and uh, you know, we we I mask up, and you know the the guys kind of sit around in the uh, living area, you know, as, as as far as space as we can, and you know we meet there. Um, and then with O'Connell, you know, we we've been trying to meet outside when we can. Yeah, uh, you know, going to those three, well, uh, you know, so the village is in O'Connell, um, and then Franklin County's dropped off uh, for now, but I mean, I'm still maintaining contact with them, and um, you know, wanting to get. I, there's there are two there's two other, um, you know, the shelter, there's like two other homes that um, I would I would like to get services into there, which. Um, Prior to this job, you know, me working in Gear Up, I served them, so I have a prior um, relationship with with those with those homes. And so, I mean, you know, going forward, I think it would be good, you know, just to have more. I don't know, just have the willow out out there in the community, you know, being more more visible and yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think I think it always uh, that always is, is is a goal, something that would would definitely help. But I think it sounds like you really got to establish those relationships um, and kind of on site as the, the the best place and, and means and way to do that. Hey, uh, we we talked a little bit about this. We already kind of went in a little bit into this territory, but. Um, what you'd mentioned that you know one of the things that you'd like to see is maybe more more access to you know kind of housing you know coming out of that sort of foster transition um what what other plans or ideas would you like to see sort of in the next sort of three to five years 
um, with your program. I mean, not necessarily, you know, uh, not saying that, you know, anybody's going to be around in three to five years, but where would you like to see that program kind of go um, in the longer term? And what, what would you like to kind of build towards? Right, right. I mean, I don't know, I think just, just gaining more, I mean, it's really just gaining trust and like building trust with the, you know, the, the, the people who, who are involved in those students' lives. I mean, whether that's the facilities or, I mean, just foods or, you know, like local, local organizations, right, that like want to maybe give these kids like internships or, I mean, like for, for me, it's like, you know, having um, a structured space. I mean, like, you know, a structured living space. Um, that's not like an instant, you know, that's not institutional, right? That is, I mean, a living space, you know, for these, for these kids, you know, these young adults, um, you know, to have a safe space to, to make mistakes, right? Like, you know, that, because I got, you know, <laughs> just thinking about when I was a young adult, you know, like I made a lot of mistakes, but I had, <clears throat> I had a, I had a support system, right? Where, these kids don't necessarily have that kind of that immediate support, you know. And so, if you know, thinking of like, I don't know, keeping up with home maintenance, or I mean, even like laundry, you know, or dishes, right? I mean, things that that can um, that are habits, you know, that you that you either set kind of that you can set early, <laughs> um, and then not really worry about them, you know, like devote a lot of mental energy to them or uh, kind of be constantly working on that. Um, and it's just another plate in the spinning plate balance thing, right? That these kids, I think, becomes overwhelming. Right, right. Uh, yeah. And, like, going forward, I mean, like, I would love to partner with, I mean, I mean, I know Tenants of Homeowners does a lot of good, like, so, you know, social work, or I mean, you know, um, finding spaces, you know, for for those kids to actually have a have a independent living program. I mean, I know that there was footprints. Maybe if I don't know, that was six or seven, five, know, five years ago or something. I mean, uh, um, and I don't know what happened to that program, but um, you know, we need to bring it back, or you know, have a program where there's a uh, more of a structured support system for students who are on the independent living track so that they can, yeah, get a leg up because they need it. Well, it sounds good. I really appreciate um, your spending the time with us today. It looks like we're drawing towards kind of the end. One thing I do like to do before we close out um, is just to kind of ask everybody if um, there's anything you would like to uh, kind of kind of shout out, anything any anything like you about yourself that isn't necessarily work related. Maybe something you do for for fun, or uh, if you're if you're um, doing any any uh, any gigs or anything, which no one's doing right now. But just you know anything like to do that might be the people might find interesting right no well i mean i'm i don't know i'm i'm it's like a stereotypical dad <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> no no i mean i like i like music i mean i i i have I, I i play music but i haven't played music in in years and so i mean um and I do art, but I haven't done art in years. So it's just like finding out um, what I like to do is uh, what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? Like while I'm finding out, you know, life. So, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've been in Lawrence, you know, for about 20 years. And it's probably like the only place to live in Kansas. Yeah. Uh, you know, not to be biased, but um, I mean, I, I lived in Pittsburgh for a little while. And then moved up here. So, 
All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you spending the, the, the time today. Um, if, uh, if anybody has any questions and you um, have missed the, the broadcast or you think of anything afterwards and you're watching the broadcast, um, we will put the emails down in the, in the comments. So feel free to email Morgan or myself. Um, we're very friendly and we would love to talk to you about um, the foster transition or really any of the programs the Willow has to offer. Um, if you need any more information about anything that you've heard here or in need of uh, information or help regarding domestic violence issue, our number is 785-843-3333 and our hotline is 24 hours and uh, it is answered by trained staff. Um, you can also find us at willowdbcenter.org. Thank you so much, Morgan. Really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Great. Thank you.